Good evening. Welcome to Maranatha Church, Maranatha Baptist Church. What a joy it is to be out here twice today. If I can find where I'm supposed to read. Leave it to Tommy. Um, Brother Sam preached this morning about the whole armor of God. And I, I thought about that a lot. If you, if you think about the armor that he's putting on, all of it covered the front of the body. So that's just for us that is pressing on toward the high, uh, high mark of the calling of God. Um, if, we, if we fall short and turn the other way, you have no protect, protection behind you. So keep on keeping on. So I'm going to read Galatians 5, 16 through. Through 26. Walking in the spirit. If we stay in the spirit, we're not going to have to worry about going the other direction. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are con contrary to one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would but if you be led of the spirit you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions and heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as how I have also told you in time past, that they which do these do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions or affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit and let us not be desirous of vainglory provoking one another and envying one another. So if, if we stay led by the Holy Spirit, we won't have to worry about this other stuff. Uh, prayer and studying this word and uh, surrendering to the Holy Spirit uh, Satan has not got a chance. He is our enemy, and if God with, is with us, who can be against us? Satan can't stand against us. Let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you again this, this day, uh, thanking you for all your many blessings, thanking you, Father, for the privilege and the opportunity of being able to come to your house and lifting up praises to you. Father, we ask that you bless each and every family that is represented here to, tonight. Just ask you, God, to, to just touch them tonight and encourage them, lift them up. And uh, we pray for the preaching that Brother Dale's coming with. Just ask God that you would sprinkle it with the Holy, Holy Spirit. That when we leave here, Father, we can say it's been good. Thank you again for all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And I think Brother Dale's going to... I, I'm going to try to. Let's turn to page number 489. 489. I love these old hymns. And um, Okay. All right. Let's stand if you can or want to. Page number 489. Everything is for his glory, his honor, and that's why we're here tonight. So let's sing it out as she plays 489, Down at the Cross Where My Savior Died. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name Glory to His name Glory my heart 
was the blood of blind. Glory to his name. You are definitely not singing like you're giving glory to his name. These old hymns are wonderful, and uh, they're full of power of God. They're full of his presence, and uh, we need to sing like it. We need to act like it, and uh, I, I am convinced there's a generation being raised that do not like these hymns, and for one reason, we don't sing like we like these hymns. They get bored in the house of God with these hymns because we sing like we're bored with these hymns in the house of God. So let's sing like we mean this and to like we truly want to give. I love verse number two. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. Let's sing it out. Here we go now. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me. And sing it out now. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to. I love this last verse. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Let's sing it out now. Last verse. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to name. Sing it out now. Lift up your voice. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Amen. Brother Jerry, could you lead us in prayer? Pray for this service. And I need you to pray for this message. And uh, that I believe God has directly given me from the Word of God. And uh, pray for our church, Maranatha Baptist Church. And I feel at home here. I'm thankful that I am here. God give me a week off that I was able to be here. And uh, without a pastor, the church is very vulnerable. And uh, people will try to take advantage of that. And we're not going to let that happen. That is not going to happen. And uh, we'll find out tonight why that's not going to happen. And uh, if we make enemies tonight, that's fine. We're a church. We're a family. Really don't care. So, Brother Jerry, I need you to pray for me and pray for this service and those that are watching that are part of this church. And uh, you pray at your house. And let's pray. Let's see what God wants to do. I'm excited to see what God wants to do. So, Brother Jerry, you open us in prayer. When he's done praying, you can be seated. We're going to have Adley sing a song for us. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. I want Adley to sing a song that I love and that's simply entitled Empty Me. And that's what we must do. If we're going to follow the Lord, if we're going to obey the Lord in any way, the first thing we have to do is empty ourselves. Because the reason we don't follow God and, uh, is because we're so full of other things that we desire. Brother Tommy, thank you for reading that scripture. And uh, isn't it an amazing thing? There are no coincidences with God. That's exactly the passage that God has led me to. 
And I wish we had time. There's really four passages we need to preach on this particular subject. But God led me to Galatians, and that's exactly where he wants us to go. And uh, I'm, when, you, when you read that, I was so excited because I wasn't concerned, but I knew what I'll speak about tonight will have repercussions, not for this church, but outside of this church, which we could care less about. But thank you for reading that. So I, I want you to do this. Will you do this? This is Bible study time. And I love these nights like this. And um, if you're watching, will you do this with us? As Adley sings this, would you pray? Let's pray before this message, before we just take the scripture. I, I don't want to give my opinion. My opinion don't matter. You're, and, and I want to be kind about this, but your opinion don't matter when it comes to the Bible. So let's empty ourselves. Let's see what God wants and uh, whatever it is in our life, that's why we come. Pastor Sexton at the Crown College used to always say, Wednesday night should be the most encouraging service of the week. That's why we come. We need that Wednesday morning, Wednesday night. That's why we need to be a part of these services. So let's pray. Let this be somewhat of an invitation before the message, God to empty me. I know there's a lot of things in my life that I had to empty today and to try to get God to help me to do that. So let's pray that God will do that for all of us. Adley, you sing. And then I'm going to be in Galatians chapter number five and excited about what, but we're going to talk about some other scriptures first. But you pray, let's pray that God would do this for us. Sadly, you sing this wonderful song. Lord, I know when you saved me, you filled me with your spirit and I praise your holy name. To be a light that others see, your Holy Spirit must be shining on me. So will you empty me of every selfish thing that would hinder my sweet walk with thee shine down upon me and fill me anew in every way lord let me be more like you now when There's no hiding its wonderful glow. Family and children, my neighbors and all my friends, when I'm in Jesus, then all others will know. thing that would hinder my sweet walk with thee. Shine down upon me and fill me God, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, how amazing it is to the child of God. Lord, tonight as we present this Bible study, let us present it with boldness, with clarity. God, certainly with compassion. Lord, as we have emptied ourselves to prepare for this particular study, Lord, let us realize the vital importance this subject is to the local church. God, to this church, to this family, my family. Lord, let us always be students of the Word of God. God, whatever the Bible says, that's what we will believe. 
So Lord, help us tonight in the next few moments to be attentive not to a man, certainly not to a religious opinion, but let us be attentive to your word. Thank you, God, for what you're about to do. God, for any repercussions this may cause. Lord, let us stand firm on the word of God, not caring what others may think, but only what you desire for our life. Lord, we love you. God, we sure love this church. God, protect them now without a pastor. God, that, he's already there. He's already out there. We know that. But God, he's not here yet. So, Lord, let us understand how important it is to be careful in these days of this church. God, we need you. We thank you that we have a Bible that we can stand on tonight. In Jesus' name. Adley, sing that last verse. And when your light, Lord, is shining upon me, there's no hiding its wonderful glow. My neighbors and all my friends, when I'm in Jesus, then all others will know. So will you receive me of every selfish thing that would hinder my sweet walk with thee shine down upon me and fill me anew in every way lord let me be more like you Well, if you have your Bibles, once again, turn to Galatians chapter number 5. Galatians chapter number 5, in just a moment, I, I want to give a Bible study on a particular subject. I'll begin in verse number 1 as we expound these scriptures. I want to encourage you, if you have some way to take notes, if you have a pen or a pencil, some paper, I need you to write these things down because we only have one service. And uh, I, I certainly wish that we could go to the four major passages of this particular subject or this lesson that we will speak of tonight. I want to encourage you to take these notes, to write this passage down. If you're watching this and to write this down wherever you may be watching this from because I believe this subject is of vital and utter importance to this church and to every other church that is in this day and in this hour. I want to make this statement as we begin this study. I thank God for Maranatha Baptist Church for many reasons. Pastor Wallace Smith was a very balanced preacher. Brother Marvin was very balanced in his biblical beliefs. Now that's a great danger to that because when you're biblically balanced in your approach to your convictions, the, what we would consider the liberals, those that say anything should go and everything is all right and you just dwell in this Christian liberty and, and nothing is off limits for the child of God. Well, they think in the balanced church that's trying to stay biblical, they, they consider you legalist and you're, you're living under the law and then you have the other side that are living in the law and they are living in legalism and they, they consider you liberal when you're biblically balanced. Maranatha has always for all these years and now these decades under Pastor Wallace Smith and under Brother Marvin, they have been balanced biblically in their approach for standards and biblical convictions. And many times that's a very lonely place to be. This side thinks you're legalist and this side thinks you're liberal. But in all the intentions and all the purposes, you're simply living biblically where God asks us to live as a child of God. I, I want to take the next few moments and speak on this thought, this subject that is very important. The biblical definition of Christian liberty. Do we understand this? The Bible speaks of our Christian liberty. What does that mean? Well, we should find out what the Bible says about Christian liberty. It really doesn't matter. I, I certainly would have an opinion on this subject. You and I could take the rest of the evening and to discuss this subject, what we believe Christian liberty is. But can we just take the Bible? 
Can we just take the word of God? Let's find out what thus saith the Lord about the liberty of the child of God. We understand this in our approach to this subject. We are saved by the grace of God. I am saved not because of anything that I've done, not because of anything I'm trying to keep, not because of anything I'm trying to do. The only reason you're saved, the only reason I am saved, Paul put it this way to Ephesus, for by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I can't boast on some standard. I, I can't boast on some personal preference or conviction to say that I'm all my way to heaven it's all because of God's amazing grace but when we think about Christian liberty it is not for salvation it is after salvation so as a child of God what biblically what does it mean to have liberty in the Lord Jesus Christ I want you to write this down. I wish we could go through every passage. I, I wish we could take time. But there are four major passages in the Word of God, and certainly there are more than that. But I encourage you to study these passages. Number one, write down 1 Corinthians 10, verse number 23 through 33. That is wisdom, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23 through 33. That is wisdom in your Christian liberty. Tonight or tomorrow, study that passage of Scripture. Read those verses and you'll find out about the wisdom. Let me make this statement as we are trying to lay this foundation. Many things have been said about Christian liberty. Many things will be said about Christian liberty. But you must understand the wisdom in your Christian liberty. And then number two, write down Romans 14, verses 1 through 8. Romans 14, 1 through 8 speaks of the weakness in your Christian liberty. Yes, we have this liberty. Yes, we'll discuss tonight what it means to have Christian liberty, but be very careful because we can have weakness and we can approach it in such a way to say, uh, well, I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm kept by the grace of God. And all those are biblical facts. But that does not mean I can live the way I want to. I can act the way I want to. I don't belong to myself anymore. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a weakness in your Christian liberty. And then we could go to Romans chapter number 6, verses 1 through 18. That is the way to Christian liberty. Romans chapter number six, verses one to 18, that is the way to this Christian liberty. But tonight, our brother Tommy has already read portions of this scripture. It's an amazing thing when God does that. I wanna to speak tonight just for a few moments in this study on the walk of your Christian liberty. Let me say this as we are laying this foundation. Misinterpretation of Christian liberty will either lead to liberalism or legalism. If you do not understand the true authority of Christian liberty in the Bible, and sadly it's an amazing thing, people that are educated, people that has went to the seminaries, people that call their self preachers and pastors, they, they have misinterpreted what it means to have liberty in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if misinterpreted, it will either lead to liberalism, which says you can do anything, you can act any way, you can wear anything, you can live any way. That's a misinterpreted. Or if you misinterpret it in the other direction, uh, there, there's ditches on both sides of the road. It will lead to legalism that will entrap you and that will ensnare you once again when we are free to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian liberty will always lead you closer to Christ never further away from Christ. If you believe that you can live such a wicked, ungodly life as a child of God and it is leading you away from Christ, that is not Christian liberty. If you believe that you can live any way that you want to and God doesn't care and God is not concerned as long as you're saved by his grace and there's no standards, there's no, and it leads you away from the Lord Jesus Christ. That is not Christian liberty. Notice the Bible as we begin to read in Galatians chapter number five, many of the same things that we are dealing with today, the apostle Paul was dealing with to the church of Galatia. Can I say this, just introduction. Notice the lasting 
of this Christian liberty. Here's what Paul said, stand fast. <laughs> Therefore, in what? In the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Be not entangled again with this yoke of bondage. This verse has rendered this freedom from Christ. It has freed us. Stand fast and stay right, not again to be subject to this yoke of bondage. The freedom in view is freedom from the law concerning, watch this, salvation. That here's where we have misinterpreted Christian liberty. That, that liberty that Paul is referring to, he's speaking of the Judaizers. They were coming in the congregation and they were saying, you're saved by grace, yes, but you gotta do this and you gotta keep this. He's not talking about standards. He's not talking about godly living or not living godly. They are referring to salvation, legalism in its simplest form, not in its only form, but in its simplest form simply means you're adding works to salvation. You know what Paul is telling them in, in this lasting of the liberty? Paul said, stand fast in this. You're not saved because you worked for it. You're not saved because you have kept something. You're not saved because you wear certain clothes. You're not saved because your hair is cut right. Paul said, stand fast in this liberty. I'll tell you why we're saved tonight. It's all because of God's amazing grace. It's all because Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. I have done nothing. Christ has done everything for my liberty. You know, Paul said, stand fast in that. Never waver from that. Be subject in that. We see the last of this liberty. But number two, look at the loss of this liberty. Verse number two, behold, that's an amazing word. Pay attention, take heed. I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised of Christ, shall profit you nothing. <laughs> He's simply saying this circumcision, it was an external ritual symbolizing the acceptance of the law. In such case, one depended on their legal works rather than the grace of God for the means of salvation. You know what Paul said? Whether you're circumcised, whether you're uncircumcised, there's not, that has nothing to do with your salvation. That has nothing to do with God saving you by his grace. We all have preferences. We understand that. We all have personal convictions. We understand that. But that has nothing to do with your salvation. That has nothing to do with the grace of God that has saved you. That has nothing to do with the grace of God that is keeping you. It's all what God has already done. We see the last end of this liberty, just the introduction. We see the loss of this liberty. But, but number three, look at the language of this liberty. Verse three, for I, I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Why? Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. Watch this. Everything that Paul is speaking of is referring to salvation. He simply says this. If you, if you think keeping the law, he said if you're going to keep one part, the Bible teaches this, you've got to keep all of it. That's true legalism. If you're going to do one part of it, and nobody can do that other than the Lord Jesus Christ, but Paul is referring, look at the language. He's speaking of salvation. We know this, we understand this. There are legalist churches, even in this area. They think you gotta do this, or you have to be baptized, or you have to go there. You have to wear certain clothing, and if you do not do that, you are not saved, or you cannot be saved. You know what Paul said? If, well, if you're gonna keep one part of it, you've gotta keep all of it, because legalism in its rarest form, or even in its best form, legalism is very inconsistent. We all know churches, we all know people that try to live a life of the law, and they're back under the bondage. They are back under the chains of their law. And Paul said it is no effect for your salvation. Everything he is referring to in Christian liberty, everything he is mentioning in this keeping of the law and going back to the law, it has to do with salvation. It has to do with being saved. It is not referring to after your salvation. Living for the Lord Jesus Christ, we see the loss of liberty, the language of liberty. But number four, watch verse number five. Look at the limits of liberty. For we, watch the Bible, through the Spirit, wait eagerly, wait for the hope of righteousness. How? By faith. Where? For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, 
but faith which worketh by love. Everything in our liberty has to do with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we have put our faith in him. We believe in him. We know we just celebrated the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We just celebrated the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's alive and well. We weren't there at Calvary. We weren't there when the stone was rolled away, but it's all by faith. Paul said, you're going back to the law for your salvation. You're trying to keep this law for your works of your salvation. Paul said, it's all by faith. We celebrate our faith. We lift up our faith because we're saved by this faith. I'm saved tonight because I put my faith not in my works, not in my convictions, not in some standards. I'm saved because one day, as you also did, put your faith not in the Baptist, not in denomination, you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The limits of this liberty. But number five, look at verse seven in the lesson. The lacking of this liberty. Verse seven, ye, ye did run well. Who did hinder you? You should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. He's telling the church of Galatia, they're lacking there, there was a time that you just put your faith in Christ. There was a time when you would preach and teach, you would concerning salvation, not living for God, concerning salvation. Look at the context, concerning salvation. There was a time when you preached grace and faith and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. What happened, Paul said? What drew you to the conclusion you would have to go back to the law and be entangled in this bondage without liberty of the Lord Jesus Christ. We see the lacking. But then number six in the lesson, look at the leaven of this liberty. Just introduction, verse nine, a little leaven. Leaveneth the whole lump. <laughs> this false doctrine of legalism it takes the whole lump and corrupts it. You know what that means? This, this is concerning salvation in its context. It simply means this. If you add anything to salvation, you've messed up the whole thing. If you think it's anything else than putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, it is not salvation. You have leavened the whole lump in this legalism without this freedom, this liberty. Number seven, look at verse 10. Look at the learning of this liberty. Verse 10, I have confidence in you. How? Through the Lord or in the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off, which troubleth you. He is referring to them. Paul said, why, why am I being persecuted? If I still preach the law, then they wouldn't persecute me. If I still believe it's more than Jesus Christ, if I still believe it's something that we had to do for salvation, he said, they wouldn't persecute me. He said, as a matter of fact, I wish those that persecuted you were cut off. They stopped. But there were those that came to the congregation in true legalism form, and they said, you can be saved, but you have to do this. You have to go there. You have to keep this law. You have to keep that law. Paul said you should learn that all these things are not true. Now watch the Bible. He begins with this Christian liberty, but he's referring to salvation. Everything that he speaks of is referring to being saved by the grace of God. So number eight, look at verse 13. Look at the license of this liberty. For, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only, watch this, only, write this down, underline this, highlight this. Those that will not like this message, that will watch it on Facebook, could you please open your Bible? Only, use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love. Serve one another. 
Yes, we have liberty, Paul said. Yes, we're saved by grace, Paul said. But he said, you don't use that for an occasion to satisfy your flesh as a Christian. I, the only way I'm saved, I, could, I couldn't work good enough, I, I couldn't work hard enough, I, I couldn't live holy enough, that's impossible. I have liberty, I am set free in the Lord Jesus Christ, but that's for salvation. I do not have liberty as a Christian to please my flesh, to ever satisfy my flesh. And what modern day religion has done they have polluted the law of liberty to say we can live the way we want to. We can act the way we want to. We can drink socially. It's okay to live in this sin. It's okay to be this way. And Paul said, never use that liberty as an occasion to satisfy your flesh. Once for the word of God, we see the learning, the license of this liberty. But number nine, verse 14, we look at the love of this liberty. What is it for? <laughs> well, verse 14, for all the laws fulfilled. How? In one word. Even in this, he quotes, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if he bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another with your liberty. Understand this, what this means and the love of this liberty. But here's the lesson. Number 10, look at verse 16. I'm interested tonight in the lesson of liberty. We understand that verses 14 and 15 is in the Bible. We understand that what he referred to is a sin to be this way against your brother and sister in Christ. But here's the problem. Paul doesn't stop there. But that's where those that are using this liberty as a license to live the way they want to, to act, that's where they like to stop. But that's not where the Bible stops concerning Christian liberty. Watch the Word of God. Look at this lesson of this Christian liberty. Verse number 16. Let me say something. I'm almost, I'm almost done. Let me say something about the reason for this liberty. This, watch the wording I say then. You know what the Bible just said? Everything that Paul said from verse 1 to 15, Paul said, because I said all of that, now I'm going to say this, because I spoke to you, we're not saved by works, we're saved by grace. We're not kept by works, we're kept by grace. We're saved, we're set fast in the liberty. We're going to stand in it. We're not going back to the law for our salvation. We're not going to live chained up by the law. We're set free by the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, I said all of that. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. He shall not fulfill the lust of your flesh. You know what that means? Christian liberty does not draw us away from the Spirit of God. It draws us closer to the Spirit of God. Christian liberty does not cause us to walk in the feelings and the emotion and the desires of our flesh. Christian liberty causes us as Christians to fulfill and obey the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Christian liberty does not teach you to walk in the flesh, but it tells you to walk in the Spirit. You say, well, the Bible just says don't get drunk. Well, that's not true. The Bible says it's okay to do this and be a social drinker. The Bible says it doesn't say nothing about clothing. It says a lot about modesty. So how do I know what is right and what is wrong? Well, if I'm walking in the Spirit, there's not a question. But if I'm not walking in the Spirit, there's many questions. If I'm walking in the Spirit... <laughs> How do I know if I'm not walking, if I'm walking in what I've considered religious liberty? I'm walking in a dangerous place. But if I understand that my Christian liberty 
draws me closer to the Spirit of the Lord. I may be able to do a few things, but if I think in any way it'll upset my Savior, I won't do them. If I have any question, can I do this or can I do that? If I'm walking in the Spirit, I'll tell you what I'll do. If I have any question, I'll just get so far to the right of it just in case because I want to please Him. We have misinterpreted Christian liberty with after salvation instead of before salvation. But Paul said, no, we're talking about before salvation. We, we don't want to be locked up in this legalism. We don't, we don't want to be messed up in works for salvation. But after salvation, we want to walk in the Spirit. We want to live right. We want to live holy. Christian liberty will not draw you away from Christ. It will draw you closer to Christ. We see the reason. Number two, look at verse 17. Look at the relationship in verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. <laughs> you know what Paul said? Oh, modern day Christianity, sadly, even preachers are standing behind pulpits and they're making these statements. Well, we, we are free, free in Christ and we have liberty to do these things. You know what Paul said? No, you don't. We're free to please the Spirit of God. Never the flesh. Why? I'll tell you why. My flesh is wicked. My flesh doesn't want to serve God. My flesh don't want to be here tonight. I wanted to wash my motorcycle. I didn't want to open the Bible and preach the word. And don't act like y'all that spiritual either. You got the same flesh that I got. My flesh does not want to serve God. You know why Paul said that? Oh, I'm free to listen to the Spirit. To obey the Spirit of God. Why? Because it's contrary. If I'm obeying the flesh, I'm not obeying the Spirit. And when I am obeying the Spirit, it's impossible to obey the flesh. How can any Christian that knows the Bible, many don't, many don't, many preachers have no idea what the Bible says, but how can any Christian that knows the Bible say that we are free to live how we want to. How could any preacher get up and make a statement that we are free to please ourselves in our flesh? And Paul said we are not because either you're pleasing the flesh or you're pleasing the spirit. You say, well, I enjoy that. Well, if the Spirit of God doesn't enjoy that, we shouldn't do it. You say, but I'm saved by His grace. I'll stay saved if I do this or I do. You may stay saved, but are you pleasing the Spirit? I'm not talking about for salvation. I'm speaking of after salvation. We see the reason for liberty, the relationship of this liberty. Verse number 18, listen very closely. Listen very closely. Those that do not agree with this message that will watch it on Facebook, I could care less what you think at this moment, but I do care what the Bible thinks. So look at the restraints of this liberty. But if you, you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. You know what he just said? As a Christian, you're living holy, you're obeying God. You're obeying the Bible. You're doing what's right. He said, you're not living under the law. If you're trying to live good as a child of God and you're staying away from this liberalism, you're staying away from the things of this world, he said, you're not living under the law. You're being led by the Spirit. And can I say tonight to Maranatha Baptist Church, and the Mercer Christian Academy. This ought to be a church and a Christian school 
that is led by the Spirit. What is Christian liberty? It's the freedom to be led of God. It's never liberty to live the way you want to. But biblical Christian liberty teaches us there's restraints in the Christian life. We are led by the Spirit. There will be those that do not agree with this message. And can I say tonight, I did not give you my opinion. But I showed you verse by verse what Paul had written to the church of Galatia under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. True Christian liberty is being led by the Spirit. The Sp Adley, you help us. The Spirit of God <laughs> will never lead you to a bar. The Spirit of God will never lead you to a lifestyle that will bring reproach upon the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God will cause limits to what you look like on the outside of your body. The Spirit of God will lead you to Christ. Oh yes, we have liberty. Yes, we're free from that bondage. I don't have to keep the law to be saved. I, I don't have to keep a certain standard to be saved. I'm saved by the grace of God. But now that I am saved, think what you want to. But we have limits if we want to please Christ. I want you to stand with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around. I know it's Wednesday evening. I know it's just Bible study time. But I certainly believe that God helped us tonight. If you're watching tonight, many of you couldn't come. We understand that. But if you're watching by Facebook, I, I want to extend the invitation to you also. Just a moment, I'm going to pray. And Adley's going to sing. And after I pray, if you're physically able, if you can't kneel down, you can sit on these front pews or stand along these walls. But everyone that is able, I want you to come to an altar because this subject is that important. And let us all ask God to help us to be led by the Spirit. Maranatha, we need a pastor. He's there. He's already there. He's not here. He's already there. We're going to pray. We're going to pray that God doesn't give us a pastor that's some legalist and that, that is so ridiculous. He's so far to the right. He binds everybody up. There's no freedom. We don't want that. We're also going to pray that God doesn't send some man that's so liberal. There's no standards. There's no convictions. There's no biblical teaching. We don't want that. Let's pray that God will give us a man that just preaches and teaches the Bible. We'll be led by the Spirit. Let's pray for our school. I graduated in 1993. Thank God for Pastor Wallace Smith that founded, established this school. Let's pray for our school. God will do the right thing. Let's pray for strength to stand fast. Let's pray for our families, our homes, our children. Father, God, we're thankful for the Christian liberty that we have. God, if we did not have this liberty, we could not be saved. But because of this liberty, we're saved by your grace. God, now that we are saved, let us be led by the Spirit of God. Why don't you come? Adley, you sing every child of God. Let's come. Come on to the front. He leadeth me. Yes, he does. Oh, blessed <laughs> thought. Blessed thought. Oh, words mm. with heavenly comfort fraught. What e'er I do. 
you've done tonight I thank you for the Bible God I believe every word I believe every line I believe every chapter every verse I believe it God Lord let this be a church especially now that is led by the Spirit God let us be Christians that are led by the Spirit God let Mercer Christian Academy be a place of education that is always led by the Spirit. Lord, thank you for what you're doing right now. God, thank you for what you want to do. God, help us to be kind and considerate, but to stand firm and to be bold in what we believe about the Bible. Lord, we need you now. And by your help, we're going to stand true to what we know is right. Thank you for this church and these people. God, wherever their pastor is tonight, bless him. Give him a good night's rest. Lord, keep him safe. Lord, I'm excited about the day that I'll come and preach for this new pastor. Lord, let him not be some ignorant, hateful, mean legalist. God, don't let him be some soft-spoken liberal that don't even believe the Bible. God, just put him right in the middle. Let him be a man of compassion that'll stand firm on the Word of God. (laughs) God, they had that in Pastor Smith, Brother Marvin. So God, give it to him again. Lord, this is your church. We're just trying to be obedient, being led by you. So help the men, the pulpit committee, school board, the leaders, administration. God, help all of them, every teacher, to be led by the Spirit. Thank you for our liberty. Thank you for our salvation. Lord, we sure love you. In Jesus' name. Adley, sing that last verse, if you would. Lord, I would place my hand in thine, nor ever murmur nor repine. Content, whatever lot I see, since tis my God that leadeth me he leadeth me he leadeth me by his own hand he leadeth me his faithful father Does he lead you? Um, That's a question I guess we all need to ask ourselves. Are we walking the way that Christ wants us to walk? Paul said all things are legal to him, but would it be expedient for for you or for me? For God, would it be edifying to God? 
Uh, so that's, as Brother Dale preached, if we're led by the Spirit, we'll stay away from that, that kind of life. If we think of it, um, well, the little bracelet they used to wear, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus think? Uh, if, we could, if we could walk around with that mindset, uh, that we'd be pleasing to God in everything that we do, and I think we'll be all right. Thank you, Dale. Let's close in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, God, we come before you thanking you again for this day, thanking you for your many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you for the privilege of being called a child of a king, a child of God. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We ask you to go with us throughout the rest of this week. Bring us back uh, at the next appointed time. Help us, Father, to, to be mindful of you in everything that we do or say. Uh, help us just uh, strive to be pleasing to you in our walk throughout the remainder of our life. Lord, we, again, we love you and praise you. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Whosoever